From his modest studio nestled in the woods near Glenboro, Manitoba, Peter Sawatsky creates art that is showcased across the country, including the 29-foot Seal River Crossing and 22-foot Perilous Crossing right here in Manitoba. Before Peter dove into bronze, he was a celebrated carver, winning many awards. I did that for, for 15 years, and uh, I got really involved in it, and I knew birds pretty well inside out. It became a little bit stagnant after a while, and there was other things I wanted to do, and it wouldn't allow me to do the work I'm creating now. And so I, I, I basically jumped ship, so to speak, that's when I went to, went to bronze. Uh, Mac McKenzie, the sculptor in, in Alberta, you know, convinced me to try it. And, and I'd, I'd been a little bit leery about it to start. And then I decided, no, I'm gonna do one or the other. I'm either gonna drop the bronze and stick to carving or vice versa, and I just chose the bronze. And I've got all my carving tools and they're still all razor sharp, but I haven't touched them for uh, 18 years. Once Peter got used to working with bronze, he created a personal style or process. Someone that knows that they're looking for Peter would see that, somebody driving by would think that's beautiful, that's awesome. But at the same time, it doesn't, it doesn't scream, you have to look at me. Start you know, with an armature, so whatever size I want to do the piece, I use uh, plumbing pipes uh, with flanges. And then I just basically work on my form, working on the bone structure first, and sort of start with a skeleton, and then start building up. The next step is to, to shim it up and uh, divide everything into sections. You spray the whole, everything with uh, mold release, and then we have a, a rubber that I mix, and then you just brush it on. About an hour later, you do a second coat. The next step, you uh, use plaster and burlap, what we call the outer shell or mother mold, and what that does, that keeps the rubber in place. And then you've got your rubber, like that, and you have your outer shell. So what they do at the foundry now, they brush wax onto here. Then they'll put those two halves together, and they'll pour wax in and out and in and out till you get a wax that's about 3 eighths of an inch thick. You physically take out your branch like this. Now you have a wax branch that looks just like that did. They put pour spouts on it, wax rods on it, put it in plaster again, and burn out all the wax. Then inside that plaster you pour your bronze, and then you get a hollow bronze that looks just like that. Then you break the plaster and then you get a, a bronze piece like this. Peter's dedication to creating lifelike art took him to Churchill seven times, and even as far away as Africa for research. He, he understands the animals. He's watching them all the time. For hours, he'll sit there watching them, molding different pieces as he goes. He uses photographs as reference, but for the most part, he's inspired by what he captures when he's watching them live. You know, you can study animals at zoos and, and from photographs, but photographs, no matter how good they are, they really don't give you the feel unless you've actually seen the animal in the wild. Um, you know, I've seen lots of animals in zoos and game farms and they just don't react the same as a wild animal. There's, there's intricacies in a wild animal that, um, that they have and, and they portray and you can tell how they react to certain situations where a zoo and game animals are conditioned to certain programs, you know. Since Peter started with bronze, he's been exclusively with Locke Gallery. I don't deal with any other galleries. Um, they have a gallery in Winnipeg, and then they started a second gallery in Toronto, and they have a third gallery in Calgary. So they actually had three galleries. So I'm basically represented across the country. Peter's very sought after. There's a lot of people that, uh, a lot of clients that are looking specifically for animals. Peter is our number one artist. Being it from birds to uh, large cats to the polar bears that we identify ourselves with here in Manitoba to grizzlies. Peter has touched everything so we have clients from coast to coast uh, that really seek out his work for something special that they have in mind for, for either their homes or their corporate offices. Peter owned and operated his very own foundry for 15 years, even rebuilding after an accidental fire. After completing Selkirk's Perilous Crossing, Peter received another large monumental commission. 
Peter decided to have his work bronzed at another foundry. This would give him more time to focus on the artistic creation. The minute, within five minutes, I knew I wanted to deal with this foundry. Despite his national success, Peter is still a strong supporter of local talent. If we have the talent here, why not support local talent? Uh, whether it's you know in Winnipeg or whether it's in Manitoba, but if it's a Manitoba project, let's see Manitoba artists do the work. Manitoba is home to many of Peter's sculptures and has been a strong supporter of his work. It feels good, yeah. It's nice to see, yeah. Like I, I, the city of Winnipeg, they've been really good to me. I've been very supportive of my work, which I really, really appreciate. And I've been very fortunate to have you know Manitoba really behind me in a lot of these projects, which has been nice, yeah. It's amazing work that he's doing. The amount of people that respond to his pieces, he's, he's really found his element in bronze. 